Okay, hey everyone, Coding Heaven over here. Uh, today, today you'll, you're watching my very, very first video that I'm going to be posting on YouTube. I hope it's going to be good. Pretty nervous. So uh, today we're going to be making Pong. This game right here. It's a very, very popular arcade game. Uh, came back in the day. So, so it's a very simple game. Usually, uh, normally it's it's a bit more complicated than this. Depend depending on where the ball hits the pallet, it goes at a different angle. I won't be doing that in this in this in this uh, tutorial. I'll just be doing the simple version where it bounces at the same angle everywhere. So I'm controlling the pallets with the up up and down arrow and the W and S keys. Uh, okay, so this is the game. Seems pretty cool to play. It's a two-player game. Let's get started. Let's get right into it. Okay, so let's get started. Let's create a new Java project. Let's call it Simple Pong because it's going to be a very simple version of Pong. And um, yeah, that's all you got to do. Now in this Simple Pong, you're going to see source. We're going to add a new package. We're going to call it com.main. Uh, usually we add it. We say com dot main just to just to be just to be specific because a lot of companies use com as like like the fact that they're a company. I use that just like because it's convention, and the com dot main means it's the main package. Inside the main package, we're gonna add, we're gonna add a few classes. First class, of course, we're gonna add the window class. The window class is where there's gonna be the window where the, we'll be able to create the window. Let's add another class. This class is going to be called. This class is going to be the game class, where where all the um, where the game is going to work. We're going to create another class. We're going to call it the paddle class. This is for the the right and left paddle that I showed you. And um, let's make another class. This is going to be the ball class. The ball needs a class for itself. And uh, the that's not it. We're going to have one more class we're going to need to make later on. It's going to be the key input class. We're going to take we're going to use an entire class to to take the keyboard input and be able to move our pal our palettes. Okay. Let's start with the window class. Let's finish the window class r right away. Let's take this off. Um since since the window since the windows the window is going to be a j frame basically so we're going to be we're going to be like j frame let's call it frame equals new j frame and um, i want to be able to put in the constructor a title and a game for it to add the game into the j frame so the title goes into here semicolon um also there's a squiggly line under here because we need to import JFrame. And it's tedious to go every time do this and then import the JFrame. So we, what we can do is Control shift o and it's going to add it automatically for every single um, un, unidentified uh, use of, um, of, like a, of like a class or outside class or something. So it's going to do that for every time. So that we created the JFrame, now we need to now we need to initialize a few variables so frame dot set close come on oh set default close operation sorry set default close operation to jframe dot exit on close next is uh, frame dot set resizable equals false so the first one basically means that when we press X on the game, it's going to exit. That's pretty easy. This means that I don't want to resize the window so it doesn't create a bunch of errors with the palettes and everything. Next, I want to, of course, I want to frame.add frame .add game. Sorry. Game. Uh, this uh, this is this will basically we basically mean that the game is going to be a component object. It's going to inherit from an object that inherited from the component interface. So let's go and do that. 
the game is gonna be of course we're gonna need we're gonna need to draw on the game we need to draw the palettes the ball the scores the background the dotted line in the middle so we're gonna have to extend from the canvas um, we're gonna have to inherit from the canvas class and also because we need a game loop if we need a game loop we need to implement oops, sorry implement runnable and uh, yet again we have we need to import so control shift O everything is imported implements uh, sorry okay runnable oh my god no that's not that's this is this is the the constructor okay this everything goes up here okay the game extends canvas implements runnable up here and since it extends canvas we need to add the unimplement uh, since it implements runnable i mean we need to add the unimplemented methods so that's the run method is the only unimplemented method we also need to add a generated serial version id that's right that generated uh, actually no screw that whatever doesn't matter no, one's, no one cares about that anyways okay let's go finish the see now there's no more squiggly line on ads because the game is now now inherits from a component okay uh, what else do we need to do of course this line of code is gonna avoid a few problems we're gonna experience in the future uh, in the future so um, So it's going to basically pack onto all the components. It's going to be a perfect fit for the game component. That's, that's going to be a canvas. We're also going to do this. This is really not important. This is really not important, but I just like it. So if you do this, the the game is going to appear centered. It's going to be appear centered into the screen. This is really not necessary, but I like it like that. And we're also, of course, we're going to set visible equals to true. Uh, set visible true and then in the end we're gonna write game dot start we're gonna start the game now this is not a, a method that exists so we're gonna we're gonna create it okay now the window class is completely done we don't even need to work with it anymore the window class is, uh, it's completely done um, what's wrong with that game dot start public void start it's already created what's wrong okay oh okay it's perfect okay window we're already done window done we don't need to we don't need to look at the window class anymore because that's that's it we don't need to do much more okay now let's start with the game this is where the basic this is where everything is going to happen this is where all the all the, um, the methods inside the class are going to be called to update to draw to um, to update to draw to test the collisions and everything it's where we're gonna where we're gonna stop the game and where we're gonna put a few extra functions inside we're gonna put the game loop of course so if you think about it the game pong what does it need first of all we need a width and a height for the screen so that's gonna be public static final int width remember that a constant always has uh, a constant's name is always capital capitalized everything this is the Java Java common way of writing it. It's so uh, we're gonna make that a thousand. That seems good, and I also want a sixteen by nine aspect ratio. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna do height equals width times nine times nine over sixteen. This is gonna make a sixteen by nine aspect ratio. Because the, the height, of course, is going to be smaller than the width. So we're going to multiply by something less than 1. Okay. Um, after that, what else do we need? We also, we, of course, we need a public variable that states if the game is running. If the game is running. Uh, let's initialize it to false because the game isn't running in the beginning. Uh, since we implement from the runnable, from the runnable um, interface, we need a thread this is going to be private because we're not going to be accessing our thread anywhere else 
in in the code thread let's call it let's call it game thread game thread um, thread game thread what else do we need of course we need the the object so we ha we you saw in the game there was a ball and two paddles so we're gonna write private we're not gonna be accessing these outside and if we are accessing them out accessing them outside we will giving them as parameters to keep this uh, this class encapsulated okay so ball let's call it just ball private paddle let's just call it paddle one Paddle one would be the left one, of course, and the private paddle, paddle two. Okay, I think that's it. This this is it for the uh, control S for save. This is it for the variables that we need. Uh, by the way, this is going is going to be. I'll be making a website soon for my YouTube channel, and I'll be posting all the code that I have in there, and it's going to be commented code too. I'll be commenting on everything. I won't be commenting on everything now because it's going to make the video very very long okay let's get started now what what do we need to do we have never put anywhere the the, the size we only declared the variables for the size but we never put it there's we never put the size anywhere so I'm gonna create a function called called canvas setup and a nice thing about Eclipse is that you can just write the function is gonna ask to create it for you which is really cool Okay, now this dot set. Let's do preferred size to new dimension. It's really annoying that this this function needs to take a dimension object. So uh, new dimension with width and then height. We're also going to be doing the same thing for um, maximum size set maximum size set maximum size uh, we also need to import dimension control shift O import a dimension and set minim minimum size set minimum size oh I wrote one more uh, knee. okay set minimum size this is it this is it for the canvas setup this is all you need so it's probably going to I think it's going to be fine if we run it. Can we launch? There are no current, there are no recent launchers. Oh, oh, oh we're supposed to implement the the, the, the public, the, the, the main class in this function. I should have done that when I created, when I created the, the class. Bummer, okay, public, static, void, main, String args we will be using any arguments in this game and in this we're gonna be creating new a new game it's that simple okay seems like it's gonna work now okay perfect it runs now in here we're gonna be creating of course because we need when we create a new game it, it needs to create a window so we're gonna write new window we don't need to store it in a variable because like what are we going to use what are we going to do with the variable anyways the title is going to be simple oh my god simple pong and also we're going to give it this because if we remember properly it takes a game a game uh a object up type game so this is what's going to happen now let's run it there we go we have a window Okay, perfect. Now, what do we do next? So we need to, we need to, um, like, we need to start. We need to have the function start, run. We need to also have a function stop. So let's create that public stop, public void stop, public void stop. So um, this is gonna, this is gonna be. The, fun the, 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 the function to stop everything so how do you stop how do you start actually in the first place so of course we need to create we need to initialize the game thread so thread uh, no no game thread equals new 
this thread and because this is a class that implements the interface runnable we can give it to the thread we're gonna do game thread dot start start and we're also going to of course write running equals true because running because it's, it's gonna start running so it equals true how do we stop it now of course threads are kind of complicated to work with so I'll do it so I'll just write it with no without saying anything join join it says here waits for this thread to die this means that this is when we want it to die the problem with a statement like this is that sometimes it doesn't work and sometimes it's gonna and if it doesn't work it's, it's gonna it's gonna throw an exception it's gonna throw a problem so what we're gonna do is we're gonna surround it by a try catch a try catch block just basically tries to do this and if an exception occurs it's gonna catch the exception and it's gonna tell us about it it's gonna write it in the in the com in the console right here we're also gonna write running equals false of course okay we kind of did the outline and everything so let's let's save this for now and uh, I'll be continuing in the part two thank you for watching thank you for watching my very first video coding heaven out